Imagine turning your LinkedIn profile into a magnet, attracting connections, opportunities, and a massive following. I've turned this dream into a reality, and today I'm going to show you exactly how you can do it too. I've been recognized as a top voice on LinkedIn and amassed over 150,000 followers. For me, LinkedIn is more than a routine. It's a pivotal platform that's transformed my career growth and personal brand. I'll reveal the secrets that propel my LinkedIn growth and share insights on how you can apply these strategies to your profile. Plus, I'll be sharing a free bonus as well. Meanwhile, let me know, are you on LinkedIn? And what are your platform goals in the comments? Now, let me talk about why LinkedIn? Because when most people think about LinkedIn, they're like, yo, this is boring. I don't have time for this. It's more than just a resume. LinkedIn is a powerhouse when it comes to networking, connections, personal brand, and content. As I'm making this video right now, just a couple of days ago, LinkedIn has surpassed a billion users on the platform. You just told me you a billion users on the platform and it's been seen over you know multiple regions, over 200. So if you're not on the platform, you need to get active. And that's gonna dive into what has LinkedIn done for me? And this is what I've been able to achieve because of the platform. Number one is I've been able to see and travel the world. Uh, I had an opportunity to be a sales trainer for three and a half years where I was going all over the globe and training teams on how to go and prospect and get meetings, cold call, cold emailing, the whole entire thing. And that wouldn't happen without LinkedIn. I also have gotten the opportunity to do keynotes, SKO, sales kickoffs, essentially, and dive into that with teams and, and show them how to sell and show them how to get better at presenting and public speaking. Never would have happened without LinkedIn. I've met tons of friends across the world. Uh, there's countries I can go to and I can hit people up and they're like, yo, you got a place to stay. You got a place to immerse into the culture as well. And the biggest benefit is that it's allowed me to start my own business because of the network that I've built on LinkedIn. And it's allowed me to get opportunities and access to things that other people wouldn't. So most people might see this as a snooze fest platform, but it is one of the best platforms that you can start taking advantage of to start seeing success, not only in your career, but in your personal life, just like I mentioned. Now, with all those things said and all the things that, I, that I've seen across the board and the LinkedIn top sales voices that I've won and, and the sales awards that I've gotten, you probably want to know how can you get these same results? How can you travel? How can you do these things with LinkedIn? Morgan, what are you talking about? I thought that was just for Instagram. So what we're going to do is dive into the next part of this is setting up your profile. So in order for you to do well on the platform, your profile needs to be on point and it needs to be seen as your landing page. No longer are people really looking at your resume. LinkedIn is your digital resume. So that's really important. LinkedIn is your digital resume and that's where we want to dive into. Here. So the very first thing you need to look at is your profile picture. This is where most people go absolutely wrong. Y'all, this, this is where people go wrong because what ends up happening is that they end up taking a selfie like, I don't know, like they're fishing or they're like in a cave and super dark. Like that's not what people want to see. I'm not saying you need to go and put your wedding photo on there or whatever it is, but make sure that you put a photo where you look professional. If it's something that has to actually do with the field, that makes sense. You know, I do have people who will take certain pictures. If for example, maybe they're golfers, so they'll take one golfing. Okay, that makes sense. You're selling to golfers, but make sure that your picture matches the demographic of who you're selling to and it's appropriate, right? If obviously you're in the financial space versus being like in the tech space, those are two different type of demographics and also what you're wearing. Make sure you look professional. Now, the next stage on that is your background cover. This is a lot of real estate. Don't waste it. Here, you can have a call to action to something. So, hey, check out our website. You could have all the logos that you work for on this one. You could have your company statement here. You could even have a background of your city because you sell in a certain region. I don't know, but make sure that your background cover is calling to action to something, right? Don't just let it, just don't let it be bare there. Let it actually do something. So and you can see a couple of examples uh, as well here, but that's the key. You want to make sure that you're showing and doing something value prop, call to action, show them something, etc. Next thing you want to do is your headline. So that is right below the profile picture. This is actually the one of the most important ones besides the profile picture, because this is what people see when you send a connection request. If you have a terrible headline, nobody's going to care. So when you think about your headline, there's three different frameworks here. Number one, show them something unique that you do that helps them solve the problem. So for example, let's say that you're doing sales training to keep it super simple. You don't want to just put sales trainer. There's a lot of sales trainers. So you might want to put like, hey, unique strategies to help you convert top of the funnel or 
cold, proven cold calling frameworks or helping business owners with their sales funnels. I'm giving you different examples, but that gets you thinking about how are you uniquely positioned in the market to go help somebody, right? What are you doing? What What's going on? It also could be a mission as well. So if you look at my LinkedIn profile, it says building the number one GTM media company, right? It shows people I'm building a company. This is my focus. So if you want to hop on board, great. And so that's another way you can do that. Number two is you want some type of proof point or credibility. So this could be like, hey, you're a founder, right? Because you want to elevate the brand more. You could absolutely do that. Maybe that you you won an award, an accolade. That's always good, right? You can do something there. Showing something of credibility is going to be helpful. I mentioned top sales voice. I can put that in the profile, right? That's a good piece you could do there. Number three is in a call to action again. So you might say, sign up for the newsletter, check out the website, whatever you want to do, have some type of call to action there. I've seen that to be very successful on the headline, but try out a couple and see what works and what doesn't. The next thing that you want to do is look at your, your bio, your summary. Now, this doesn't need to be a hero's journey. And basically hero's journey is basically saying, here's where you came from. Here's where you're going. Here's what you're about. You don't need to do all that at the end of the day. All I ask for you to do is just put what do you do on a daily basis in your core values? That's all you have to put in this section. What do you do? One, two, three, four, five, right? What is your role? What are you doing? What, what are you about? And then your core values. And then and then the last piece is where someone can contact you. Super simple framework. Don't get it too crazy. The last thing that I'm going to say is actually inside of your experience, make sure you put media there. So if you're selling, if you're a business owner, especially even if you're looking for another job too, but you want to put your case studies and, and use cases inside of your experience. So when people come to your profile, they're like, oh, cool, you've done stuff with other companies. Don't leave this section bare, all right? This is where most people go completely awry. So you wanna make sure that there's something there so they can go in there, check it out and take action, right? So that's the profile. That's how you set that up. Now that we have a good credible profile, the next thing that we're gonna do is create engaging content. Now, when we think about engaging content, you know, the real thing here that we wanna do is make sure that we are someone that that people want to engage with. So here's something, pause and write this question down. What do you want to be known for? We'll let that sit real quick. What do you want to be known for? And the thing is, is that like, if you don't know the answer to that question, it's going to be a lot harder for you to create content, period. It just is. It's going to be, it's going to, it's just going to be a lot more difficult because now you're going up against everyone who is creating content. So if someone's like, I want to be known for sales. Well, it's like, okay, well get more defined. What does that mean? How do you go about it? So the best way to actually answer that question is ask people around you. What do they know you for best? What are your strongest skills? What are your strengths? And you can narrow it down. Maybe it's sales, but then it's like, maybe it's like cold calling or maybe someone's in marketing. Maybe it's digital marketing. Maybe you're in engineering, but maybe it's more like computer engineering than like another engineering. So you see where I'm going with this, ask yourself, what do you want to be known for? And then that can start distilling down to figure out what you need to do. Now, the next layer of that, when you start creating engaging content is figuring out what are your p pillars, five pillars that you want to create three pillars that generate revenue because you're creating content typically to generate revenue. You're creating a brand so you can give yourself more opportunities. So those are three that you want to look at then two that are like uniquely to you, right? So what do you want to be known for, right? We, we're going to answer that question. And let's say you want to be known for computer engineering, right? Let's just say that's what you've been known for. Great. Now, how are you going to stand out uniquely with computer engineering? So you're going to pick three topics within computer engineering that you can speak to pretty well, or you're learning and you can speak to it as you document it. So those are the only two options, right? If you don't know anything about it, don't talk about it, right? It's pretty straightforward. So pick those three. Now, let's just say two are fun topics. This makes it unique to you, right? So for example, you might pick, you know what? Video games and anime are my two things I'm going to talk about on top of my three things that generate the revenue or what I want to be known for or my subject matter expertise, essentially. That's how you need to do it. Three, subject matter expertise, revenue, helpful. Two are, hey, like these are things that I, I'm, I like. I'm passionate about that's going to help you stand out from everybody else. Because if you don't do that, it's, it's just not going to be helpful at the end of the day for anyone consuming your content, because you're just going to be another person creating content. you got to be unique, right? With this standout. So that's something that's going to be incredibly important for everyone that's paying attention. Now, once you've done this, right, you've got what you've been known for, 
you got your pillars. The next step is how you're going to deliver the content. So there's three ways to deliver content. One, we're doing this right now, video, right? You hear me, you hear me, you see me. Two is written. So you're a writer, right? You're doing your thing. And then audio, which is like, look, you're just talking in a microphone, right? Not a rapper, but you're just talking in the microphone. Okay. Now you have to decide which of those three are you the best at? Everyone has a skill within those content deliveries that they're really good at. doesn't matter who you are. You already know what it is. You probably have a hunch, lean into it. For me, it's video. For others that I know, writing. Some people, they love just talking, but they don't like getting on video. They don't like writing. Now, the benefit of this, once you find your lane, you want to double down on that lane, use that content delivery to then do your other content. So for example, I make a video. This now can be a long form post. This could be a tweet. This could be a blog if I really wanted it to, but I can deliver this faster and better than the other ones. So for some of you, you might be a writer as you watch this. Great. So write out what you want to do. Then now that's your script to make a video audio, take the audio, make it written, post it, get feedback. If it's good, make it a video. So you can layer this over and over again, but start with your strength first. Don't start with a weakness. Start with what you're good at. Then once you start doing that, then I want you to pick a day to then get to, to do something. And what I mean by that is you theme your post. This is where you really stand out. You have to treat yourself as a production. You got to treat yourself as a show. So for example, really clear. This is one I've done before tactical Tuesday. So let's say computer engineering, you're back. Cool. I want to talk about how do I build a computer, right? Computer optics. I have no idea how to do that, by the way, but like tactical Tuesday, I'm going to show you how to build a computer, right? And so then once you do that, right? Now, what are we doing? Every person that likes comments your post, you're going to go back out to them and say, Hey, thanks so much for liking this post. Thanks so much for engaging me. DMing people as you go along is key. This is where most people mess up. They get 10 likes and they get upset. These are 10 people that took the time to like your content. So as long as it's not like your mom, your dad, or your sister, right? Reach out and say, Hey, thanks for liking the content. What else would you like to see? Guess what? That now feeds into more content we can create. And now we can create a repeatable cycle, right? And that's the key. Now, creating content and engaging with your audience is, is a skill, right? It's a skill you have to have. And I've got the thing to help you master this. It's my course that is, that's free, right? Here's the bonus for you. It's the LinkedIn creator posting strategy course. And basically what I'm doing here is courses packed with insights and all strategies and tactics that I've used to continuously grow my audience. And if you're just starting out or you're just looking to elevate your game, this course is a gold mine. And did I mention to you, it's free. So link is in the description, LinkedIn creator posting strategy and check it out. It'll help you advance your LinkedIn journey. Now let's get back into it. So you got your profile set. You, you now have to know how to create engaging content. The next thing that we want to talk about is your networking strategy. So this is super simple. I have a spreadsheet and it has 20 people that I like to engage with. Do not get caught up scrolling in the feed. This is where people go wrong. So I'm going to look at my spreadsheet and I, and I just click the post There's a post feed that is on LinkedIn. And I just go look at the recent posts and I engage. Now this is not saying great post Sally or like, this was a great insight. That's not going to be helpful. Make it thoughtful. I say two sentences minimum, right? Two sentences minimum to engage with people as part of this strategy, right? And this is going to allow you to get in front of these people and show them, show you, show them that you know what you're talking about and you can build that credibility there. This is what I do across all platforms, right? I did this at the beginning of LinkedIn. That's how I grew. I'm now starting to integrate this into Twitter, right? I do this sometimes on Instagram, more on Twitter than anything, but like this is where I'm really diving in and getting the most right out of my engagement is networking with these people and, and now commenting. And guess what? Now that when you show up in the comments, it's easy to DM. So in all these people are people that you want to get on your radar, right? You want to collaborate with them, right? Which is another piece of this. You want to collaborate. You want them to show up for you. That's not going to happen if you don't show up for them. So leave thoughtful comments, make a spreadsheet, dive in and dig in. My last thing is when you're networking, find people to collab with, whether it's a podcast, live show, etc. I always say, make sure that the person you're collaborating with, you follow the same ethics and morals. Cause if you don't, that's going to be miserable for you. So make sure that you're aligned, make sure they're on point so that you can network appropriately and get the things done that you need to get done. That's my networking piece. Make sure you're being proactive, make sure they're in your same field and go about it that way. So the next thing y'all probably hear this all the time when people talk about content is consistency. 
It felt like Morgan, like, okay, I know I got to be consistent. But let me tell you a story. So when I first started creating on LinkedIn, the first four months, I felt like I was yelling in the void. Like 10 likes, 10 likes, eight likes, five likes, a couple comments, a couple messages, one or two. But it was, but it wasn't inspiring, right? It wasn't like, oh man, I've hit, I've hit it. Let's, let's go. It took some time. And I was posting every single day, right? For like four or five months. And here's the thing about this is that not only was I posting consistently, I was consistently behind the scenes getting made fun of. Like, oh, why is Morgan post on LinkedIn? That's a resume platform. That's boring. He's never going to make it. So, so I'm hearing this from like acquaintances, friends, right? They're not like my friends. But I was just like, what is going on, right? Like, I'm just trying to make this happen. And I was really getting down and i just realized at the end of the day though is that i know at one point this is gonna land because i believed in it and that's what i'll tell you like consistency comes down to just believing it like if you keep going something will pop at some point it has to as long as you're continuously getting better which was the key so i remember one day i posted something and it just took off it had like 150 likes 40 comments and it was getting shared like all across linkedin and i was like this was the moment and I remember that moment being like, this is the feeling, this is what I've, this is what I've been waiting for. And ever since then, it just took things to new heights. I started doubling down on my content, making more content and the rest was history, which led to the following I have today. So be consistent. And the best way to be consistent is start off once a week. This is like working out. All right. When you start working out for most people, you're not going to the gym five times a week. I know I'm not right. I'm not trying to go to the gym five times a week at the beginning. Are you kidding me? But once a week, that's fine. I'll start there. Then start upping it up twice a week, three times a week. Every Now it becomes every day, right? Where I, I post on LinkedIn pretty much almost every single day at this point. So treat your posting like that, like working out, building the muscle, getting in the gym, putting in the reps to the point where it becomes what you do. But that takes time. If you want to go all in at the beginning, fine, but know that you're going to have to keep that pace up. So that's why I recommend people to ease into it. Now, the last piece of this is how do you measure, right? And so at the end of the day, yes, follower count can be a vanity metric. It is a good thing to have and look at for sure, but it can be vanity. And most people would probably agree with that. So what we want to look at is meaningful metrics. And so one meaningful metric is your engagement rate. Look, if you post something and get a thousand likes with two comments, that's sus. <laughs> like, 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 I don't want to tell you. That's, that, that's 100% sus. You don't want to do that, right? You want to make sure that's meaningful, right? Engagement, because that means people are vibing with you, right? So I'm always looking at my engagement rate. Is it going up? Is it good, right? Is it above a 1.5? I'm set, right? And that means every time I do a, a post that goes above the twos or threes, I know I need to do something like that again, right? It's an indicator to double down. The second thing that I look at is oh, what are my, my quality connections? And what I mean by that is, are these are people that are potential buyers of my service, of my whatever it is. Maybe you're dropping a course, right? Maybe you're getting uh, sales opportunities. Maybe you're getting opportunities to go do keynotes, talks, these things of that nature. Like how quality are these opportunities across the board that are coming into your network? I always look at that because if you're getting bad connections, that means you're putting out bad output. You're attracting the wrong people. And the number one meaningful metric is your DMs. If your DMs ain't popping, your content ain't really popping, right? So people are coming to you saying, look, Morgan, that was a great post, right? Morgan, well, that really hit home with me. That's what you want in your DMs, right? And yeah, you're going to get some haters for sure. And that's just a part of the game. But you're going to find people who actually find what you do meaningful. And that's the most important piece at the end of the day. And that's why you want to look at those meaningful metrics as success and the impact you're having. I'd write this one down. This is my quote, impact over income. That's what we're looking at here. Impact over income. If you focus on that, you'll get the income as a byproduct, right? So now you have the blueprint. Look, it's your turn to take these LinkedIn strategies and go be successful. But LinkedIn is not a sprint. It's a marathon. And look, at the end of the day, you might take these strategies and become a LinkedIn extraordinaire. <laughs> you never know. So please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. I appreciate y'all. Keep it easy.